House flipping is a craft just like any art form and not everybody that is a house flipper is a good house flipper. Today we're going to be going over the five ways that house flippers lie to you when you're purchasing their homes and I'll be sharing some of the stories of past clients so that way you don't have to go through the same H-E double hockey sticks that they had to go through. The first home I ever bought my whole entire life was a fixer-upper that we ended up flipping over a period of time. It took us years because we were novice at it. It took us a long time because we didn't know what we were doing and we didn't even know what we we're looking for which happens to a lot of people when they're fixing up their very first house but we knew we were going to do it and we were going to do it right. One of the first things that we learned that if we we're going to resell it in the future is to make sure that everything that we did to this house we were going to get permits for it. The first thing that we did was when we got a new roof on that thing we got made sure that the permits were filed and filed correctly. Of course we got a cheap roofing company but the roofing company itself was licensed and they did pull permits from the state. Whenever you're going to buy a flipped home make sure any of the major renovations that have been done around the house have properly filed permits. It's going to make a big difference when you go to resell that house after you've lived in it for a few years. This is also going to include things like your air conditioning unit, your hot water heater, and any added structures that have been added to the home itself. I just recently found a Reddit post from someone that is buying a flipped home and they said that the addition that they are getting is done in shoddy work. Let me share this with you. I'm under contract to buy a house that was recently converted from a duplex to a single family dwelling with an extension on the back. The main part of the house was well done but the flippers did a very sloppy incomplete job. We're about to submit a repair request credit for about $27 thousand dollars. This covers about twenty thousand dollars for the structure and repairs and the completely botched seven thousand dollars to correct the sloppy incomplete work. On principle I really don't want to be responsible for any changes. They've clearly marked the house as complete and renovated and I think that should be included actually completing the renovations. When I order a burger from the restaurant I don't want to bring my own onions and ketchup to put on a burger. I agree with him but here's a few things. If you're buying a house that is currently being flipped you can request any at any time during the inspection period for them to repair all the items before you'll ever sign on the dotted line. Now this is very common but with the market that we've been living in now a lot of people have been foregoing the whole inspection period and request of repairs and they've asked for a credit so they can fix it themselves. Here's the problem with that. You can get in way over your head because of the fact that you think that you know how much the repairs are going to cost because that's what the home inspector has said but it ends up being a lot more money than the twenty thousand dollars that it's estimated because everybody knows that an estimate is just that. So whenever you have an estimate you're always going to have to plan for about ten thousand dollars over. And where did I get that number from? Trust me I have flipped enough houses so every time I budget for anything I always budget for at least ten thousand dollars for each project over so that way there's always a cushion. Always. The second thing about this particular reddit post a real estate agent did answer and they gave the best response I have read in years. And she quoted the commenter and said the main part of the house is done well. Sloppy incomplete job. Twenty thousand dollars for structural repair they have completely botched. Read that out loud. What she means by that is the buyers already know that the house is in bad shape for the parts that the house was been flipped on. Who knows what's going to happen after they move in. So it's just one of those things. You already see it with your own eyes. You already know there's going to be problems. Is this necessarily something you have to buy right now? It might behoove you to buy your own renovation home and renovate it yourself and do it the way that you want to do it and that way you know it's done right. All right this is a warning story. A friend of mine was purchasing a house and she saw that it was a flipped property and they had done a magnificent job throughout the house and as she walked through it had every single finish that she wanted it was perfect. As she was talking to the real estate agent who had it listed she realized that the real estate agent actually owned that property and so she was like wow this is a really good deal. The real estate agent had said to her well I will give you a discount on the commission if you use me to purchase the house. So now the real estate agent is the listing agent and she's also the person who fixed up the house and now she's going to represent the buyer when she's purchasing this house. Now let's think about this clearly. Whose interest do you think is the real estate agent representing in this transaction? If a real estate agent is on the up and up the right thing to have done in my opinion is to have this buyer be represented by another real estate agent that isn't affiliated with the house whatsoever. In some states this would be an absolutely illegal thing to do. In other states it may not be an issue. My advice to you is if you're looking at a flipped property find out who actually owns the property itself 
find out if the real estate agent that's selling the house owns that house. Here in Louisiana, they actually even have to say owner agent. And always get your own representation when purchasing a house, whether it be a flipped property or not. You will wanna be represented and represented fairly so you can get the best deal possible. In a lot of cases, that may not be the listing agent. I never do dual agency. I think it's a big giant no-no and a red flag for you as a buyer if they're insistent that they would be the dual agent. And who knows, you could have gotten better representation and a better deal if you worked with another agent that had nothing to do with the project in the first place. It may sound like it's a great idea at first because you're gonna save money on commission, but it might cost you thousands in the long run. Now, I know you're thinking, well, that's a, that's a liability and they could get legally you know, sued for this. It could cost you a lot just to have a bunch of legal fees to ha get this real estate agent in trouble if they did anything wrong in the transaction. And I'm not saying all real estate agents are bad. And I'm not saying all real estate agents would represent you unfairly. In most cases, you do not want the listing agent to represent you because who knows whose side they're playing on. Are they playing more on the listing side or more on the buyer side? Hmm. Technically in the state of Louisiana, you can represent both sides and they call it mysterial acts where you're just basically passing paperwork back and forth and you're not giving advice to either side of the transaction. You're just allowing them to negotiate it between each other and that's it. You're just pushing paperwork. But um, yeah, Christina says no. Christina says no. Don't do it. This is another thing that Christina says no about. Whenever you're buying a flipped property, never, ever, 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 ever walk away from that flipped property and sign on a purchase agreement and say that you do not want an inspection. Of course you want an inspection. You wanna know exactly what they have done to that house. And you wanna make sure that the sellers have disclosed everything in that house that has been done to it. A lot of times when they're filling out these property disclosures, they'll say, we've never lived in the house. And then they put in NA, like not applicable, where they don't have to fill out the property disclosure. To me, this makes absolutely no sense because even though they have may not have lived on the property, they sure in heck know what they've done to the property and they should be disclosing every single thing that they've done to repair that house, to put it back on the market so they can make more money. In that property disclosure, they should also have all the permits that they had pulled during the time that they had renovated the house and any receipts that are pertinent to the purchase of the property. And that brings me to another point. Anytime that they have replaced anything in the house, like the hot water heater, like the air conditioning unit, like the roof, those things should come with a warranty from the contractor. Those warranties also include the washing machine, like the brand new dishwasher, the refrigerator, the new microwave. All of those little appliances come with warranties too. And I would demand to have those. So that way, if anything happens with your new appliances, you have those warranties and you can fill out those cards when you move into the house. A lot of people forget those and they're important because nothing's worse than having to replace a mounted microwave. Do you know how much those suckers cost? I have to do one. 750 bucks. That's a lot of money. I'm sure you don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Stinks. Let's talk a little bit more about a home inspection. So when, of course, when you're buying a house, you're going to get a home inspection because I told you to get a home inspection. But when you hire a home inspector, ask them if they have a camera they can see into the walls. And I'm going to tell you why. A client of mine was purchasing a flipped property that was absolutely beautiful. It checked off all the list. It was in the perfect location. When we went and had the home inspection, this home inspector had a camera. And sure enough, when they pulled the camera out and put it on one wall, when they had put up the brand new drywall, apparently they had shot in the drywall nails right into a pipe. As soon as anybody was to flip on the water to go upstairs, man, that thing was going to be spraying like <laughs> like the Trevi fountain. <laughs> You know? And it was one of those things like, oh my gosh, have they not had the water on all this time? How did they not know this? Of course they did make the repairs and everything was fine in the end. But if we hadn't had a home inspection, we would have never known that. Another inspection that you may want to consider is you may want to have somebody come in and check out the plumbing. And I'm going to show you why. My wife and I bought a home this past October. A few days after we moved in, we had severe plumbing issues where none of the toilets flushed and the shower drains backed up. We had a few different plumbers come out. Roto-Rooter said that we needed to replace the main sewer line. We got a few other opinions and another plumber said we needed to replace the lines that had major clog. We had them snake the line and clear us out and they said the clogs were due to the home not being used for several months, which is pretty common. So we got it cleared out and we finished moving out of our apartment and into our home. About a week later, we had an explosion of sewage in our first floor bathroom and had an emergency water removal come out and clean it up. It ended up having Roto-Rooter replace our sewer line and it cost about 10 
$5,000. Plumbing issues are no joke and a home inspector can only do so much. He's just basically making sure that everything in the house is operational, but he doesn't, he doesn't like taking the hose and the camera down into the lines to make sure that they're really good. Whenever you're buying a flipped home, have an individual inspector look at the sewage. Another individual inspector I want you to hire is an electrician. You want to make sure that all that wiring that they've done to replace throughout the house is up to code, first of all. And secondly of all, is if the panel can handle the amount of new lighting they have put in the house. That is one of those things that happens more often than not, that they'll add all these new lights in the house and there isn't enough in the panel to handle it. So they have to replace the whole entire panel. If they haven't done that and they haven't disclosed everything, this is a red flag for you as a buyer. But the good thing is that you've had those two inspections that I just told you to get. So you can tell them this is what's wrong in the house. And maybe, just maybe, they'll replace the panel and they'll address the plumbing issues. If they don't, you're going to have to do one thing for me is you're going to have to demand that they put that on the listing when they put it back up for sale, because now they know that there's a problem with the house. And now they should be disclosing that to the next buyers that come along. In many cases, they will not because you know how people are, but you can demand it. And I would call that broker up and tell them that there's all these problems at the house and they must disclose it on the listing itself. Because even though the seller may want to withhold that information, a real estate agent cannot. I know some real estate agents are probably really mad that I disclose that, but that's the truth. They can't hide information about a house if they know something. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. When it comes to the plumber, have them check the sewer line itself and make sure that the leach field, if you have a old septic tank, is up to code for your area. So in the state of Louisiana, if you do have a septic system, it has to be brought up to code and it has to have a new updated pump system if it isn't. The other thing is, is if there is a leach field with an old septic system, make sure that that is still working correctly. I've had it happen where they had an old leach field and then once we did the whole plumbing inspection, sure enough, it wasn't good enough and we had to move it. And then the county said that we had to move it X amount of feet away from the house in order to be in compliance. That cost the sellers, not the buyers, a lot of money because we caught that during the inspection period, not before the house closed. And that's one of those things that the sellers definitely need to update and bring up to code before you purchase it. Because sewer is so expensive. Leach fields are so expensive. All this stuff is expensive. And when it comes to homes that are being flipped, the goal for every house flipper is to do it as cheaply as possible. So they can sell it for the highest amount of money, but do it for a lot less money. Um, in some cases, it's a really good deal. In some cases, it's not so good. And there's nothing wrong with asking about the materials they use to flip the house. What exactly are the floors that you're putting on there? Are they real wood? Are they engineered wood? You know, something is kind of tricky with the words when they say real wood flooring and then you come in there and you're like, what kind of wood floors are these? I've never seen this kind of wood. And they're like, well, it's engineered wood flooring, which is technically a wood flooring, but it isn't like what we think in our brains, right? Like solid wood flooring. So try to splice out what they're saying in their vocabulary to know what they are actually saying instead of trying to gloss it over to make it sound more important than it really was. Ugh, I hate when they do that. It's almost like false advertising, right? Also find out what the cabinets are made of. Make sure that they're not like some kind of wood coating that they're really wood cabinets. And there's nothing wrong with asking them who their subcontractors are because you want to have those names in your pocket in case anything goes wrong in the future. So you can call them up to fix their mistakes. You know, in a lot of cases, subcontractors will warrant to their work. I can't guarantee that, but in some cases they will. So it's good to have those names and numbers on hand at the closing table. In a lot of cases, when you're buying a flip property, it's in an older neighborhood. And even though we've talked about everything on the inside of the house and a few things with the sewer on the outside of the house, another thing I really want you to look at is the trees around the house. Because although trees are very pretty and they cause a lot of shade, they also cause a lot of problems. Call an arborist and ask them, how long has this tree been? here is the tree sick and ask them how much it would cost to have it you know, trimmed up and edged up and aerated. So that way wind can pass through quickly because you don't want to have a big storm come through like a hurricane and not the air not be able to go through those branches evenly. So that way the tree doesn't fall onto your house. If you have an arborist that takes care of those trees, you'd be surprised how many trees can stay in place if they were taken care of. I can guarantee you most house flippers are not going to call an arborist to make sure that that tree is healthy. That's something you're going to want to do, especially if you're buying an older home. That arborist can also tell you how good the root system is and how far that they think 
think that the roots have gone underneath the house itself. So that way, you know, if there's a foundation issue or you're going to have a foundation issue in the future, that is also something that can come up in an inspection report. But again, when the inspector goes through, he'll just say there is evidence of a foundation problem. They're not going to tell you how much it will cost. Call a foundation engineer to come in and look at the foundation itself and send that report over to the sellers and have them fix it because foundation repairs can be as little as $500. They can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And if you're buying their house, that's something that they should fix. Even if you don't buy their house, that's something they need to know and they need to disclose to the next home buyers. Oh, here's another thing too. I want you to find out how much they purchased that flip for and then kind of run a tally of how much you think all the repairs cost. Please put in consideration the manpower and hours that it goes into putting a house back together, but kind of budget it out and see what their bottom line is and try to like meet their bottom line. And don't let them lie to you and say, well, we bought it for only $30,000 more than we're selling it for. Look that up. I hate when house flippers lie about that. I'm like, dude, I can look. I see on the tax records you bought it for 100,000 and now you're selling it for 350,000. And I know you didn't put $350,000 worth of work in there. And just for FYI, Home sales are public record. You can look those up very easily to find out how much they purchased them for. Sometimes you can even find it on places like Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor.com to see how much they purchased it for. So let's just say that the house is at $350,000 and the rest of the neighborhood is selling it for $350,000. You can't really fault them for trying to make a little bit of money and stay in line with the neighborhood, especially if the house has been renovated. So be realistic with that as well. You know, you don't want to go off the deep end being like, well, you're making $150,000. If the house is selling for that amount of money and the rest of the neighborhood is selling for that amount of money, then that's how much the house costs. If you walk away from it, somebody else is going to purchase it. So think about it. Just think about it. Mm, mm, mm. One more thing I just thought about while I was recording and I was thinking about this because I need you to know this. So a client of mine purchased a house and they really liked the paint color in the house and they asked if they would leave some paint behind. Well, the thing was is that the house flippers have been flipping hundreds of houses and all they did was they took all the paint that they had used in all of their construction projects and dumped it into one big bucket and mixed it up and put it on the walls. There was no extra paint for them to do touch-ups throughout the house. And they've gone to three different places to try to get the right color paint to match up there with their walls. And it doesn't exist. They cannot get it color matched to save their life. So know when they're flipping a house, ask for a little touch-up kit. If they don't have it, you could have the same issue as, as my friend who purchased the house. <laughs> and it is such a pretty color, it just doesn't exist. Even the computers can't match it up. The sheen is even weird. When I bought my first house, I knew it was a fixer upper. I didn't know the word flip at that time, but that's exactly what we did to it. And it actually ended up turning out really cute. And the new home buyers had a really great house, but it was because I did some things for those home buyers. One, I kept all the permits. Two, I kept all the warranties. Three, anything that had ever been done to that house, I mean, down to changing a light bulb, I disclosed everything. So by the time that they purchased the house, they knew they felt very secure with their flipped home. And that's what I want for you too. So make sure you follow everything that I told you to do if you're thinking about buying a flipped home, especially the inspection. I can't drive that in even harder. Inspections, inspections, inspections. And watch this video right here to know how home builders lie to you. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisper. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.